Hello, everyone, and welcome to another uh, show of Common Sense. Uh, it's our privilege to have Ray Henningsen. Ray, as everyone knows, is the sitting school committee member for Ward 7. Um, Ray, you've held that seat for now two years. Yes, thank you. And um, how, uh, how have you found it? It's a uh, it's very interesting job. I mean, I love every minute of it. It's one of my, uh, it's something I live for every day, actually. I, I love doing it. I love um, having an impact on our educational system. It's, um, I think a lot of people who think about or, um, I don't know if they have the right perception of what it exactly is and it entails and how many meetings and how much effort it actually takes to be a school committee person. I don't think a lot of people yeah, realize that. I don't think my wife certainly realized that as well. Um, I'd say probably on average I'm out of the house three nights a week. Um, and that's just with PTOs and regular school committee meetings and subcommittee meetings. and, and How about like negotiations? Negotiations. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll go through multitudes of meetings. There's about 18 regular school committee meetings per year, and that doesn't include the subcommittee meetings and all the other stuff. And I have four schools that I represent in my district, so um, there's four PTOs, there's, there's four different school issues, plus the high school, too. Um, so it's, it's a lot of work, but I enjoy every minute of it. Mm. How do you balance, uh, you know, home life, work life, and school committee life? Well, I'm fortunate that I have a wonderful wife. Are you a juggler or what? Are you I am a juggler. A juggler? I think I am. Um, I have an incredible wife who, who is very, very good, very understanding. She knows how much I love this job. And we work together as a team as we have for the past almost 25 years now that we've been married. You know, so we learn you know, through marriage that you know, it's a give and take, and we work together to help you know, each other where we need to. And I have a 17-year-old who pitches in and my 9-year-old who pitches in now and starting to do chores around the house and help feed the dog. So it, it helps a lot. Is, does he get an allowance? Uh, he or does. does he, or does he get, or like my other friend says, well, they have, there's food, water, heat, <laughs> a place to, clean place well, to sleep. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that <laughs> that much, but um, we, we do give him a few bucks and, and he adds it away and we teach him how to save his money and, and allocate it in a certain way so he has a little for savings, a little for spending. Because it's important that we teach him even early on, you know, the value of a dollar and, you know, how, how to manage their money because when they get older, we really don't teach that in school. We don't even teach that in college. I mean, you go right to college and they start handing you credit cards when you enter in uh, to college. So, you know, it's, it's, it's important that we teach money uh, for our kids. Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I have two sons and, uh, you know, we basically, Patty and I, try to um, make sure they, you know, know the value of a dollar and they don't get... Uh, everything they want, nor do they get what they want um, and what we're willing to give when they want it. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you, you've got to earn, earn what you get and um, understand that if you don't do what you're supposed to do and do the right thing, that it, it can all be taken away in, a, in an instant. In a, in a heartbeat. In an instant. As, as I say to my daughter all the time, you know, she has a car, we bought her a car, um, small, you know, a couple thousand dollar vehicle, and we agreed that we'd split the cost of the auto insurance because today's auto insurance rates are so exorbitant that there's no way a kid could afford it on their own. So, uh, but the deal is that she has a full time, uh, she has a job working for a dry cleaner. Um, she makes good money, and again, she has to set aside a certain amount right. of money for her auto insurance. Yeah, that's that's you know, our, both of our sons you know earn money and um, have part time jobs when they can, and um, you know they don't get to spend every dime they make. They we the paycheck comes in, so much gets put away for you know the bank in the bank and savings and. So much, you know, they can spend a little bit. You know, yeah. there's, they're, they're not just because they've earned it. They're not going to spend it all and, and just, you know, um, not have any any value in terms of what what savings is all about. Yeah, and I won't say I don't occasionally help my daughter with, you know, a little gas here and there. It's kind of a trade off for her having my campaign signs all over her vehicle. So, <laughs> you know, that sounds like fun. Um, what? Um, what uh, what do you do for a living for those people that don't know? So uh, for the well for the past 23 years I've been in the accounting and finance field. Currently I'm the controller of a multi-million dollar construction company wholesaler out of uh, Boston. So I'm responsible for 
pretty much everything, the day-to-day -day operations of, the, of that company. Uh, from the luckily, budgets. they're in the black. Yeah, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> actually, we're doing very, very well this year. Uh, we have a 20% increase in our profitability this year, um, so that's incredible. Uh, we deal with uh, construction of waterproofing and concrete materials, um, so we're having a really good year this year. And um, yeah, so I handle HR, I handle um, payroll, I handle accounting, I handle you know a variety of things to make sure that the company is is where it needs to be, and we strategize you know in the future so we know exactly where we need to be not only this year but five years down the road. That's great. Um. In terms of where you grew up, you're a Brockton guy, right? I am. Yeah. Why, um, why don't you give us a little history of you know of Ray of the young Ray Henning? Oh God, the young Ray. So uh, I was um, I was raised over on the east side of Brockton, off of Court Street. I was a Ward Five. Our, our house is on a corner, so we're actually Ward Five, and then once you cross the street, it's Ward Six. So, uh, so you so were a Franklin actually, school kid? Uh, no, actually, I was an Ashfield school kid. Oh, Ashfield. Okay. So yeah. we went to Ashfield. I was baptized at St. Nicholas back in um, uh, back when I was a little kid. I was baptized a long, long time ago in St. Nicholas in the 70s, and then they closed St. Nicholas, and then we moved yeah. over to St. Coleman's. Uh, but I was an Ashfield East Junior High Cardinal Spelman yeah. kid my whole life. So. Well, the only difference between you and I then is that is Brockton High. Yeah. 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 I was a class of '88 in Cardinal Spelman, and you know, I think when you're in high school, sometimes you don't make, you know, uh, the time as useful as you could. I look back and I think maybe I should have done a few things differently, got more involved in a few other things. But you know, now I'm I'm happy the education that I got. And yeah, sure. Um, I remember when um, growing up, um, Father McLaughlin was uh, part of Cardinal Spellman, yep. and um, I was the first one in my family, and it became time to pick which way I was going in terms of high school. And um, I never had an older brother or anyone that went to Brockton High, so Brockton High was always this shiny big place yeah. across town that I that it was just had so much. It's like, I want to figure this place out. You know, it's like a mystery. Yeah. Um, and when I told him that I was going to Brockton High, like his jaw almost dropped. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great decision to make. Um, I'm, I'm glad I did it. You know, and obviously everyone makes their own decisions. But, you know, Spelman certainly is a great place, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I like I said, it came from a Catholic school family. Yeah. So it was it was typical for, for people. My mother was a graduate of Notre Dame Academy in, in uh, Dorchester, she went to uh, Regis College, so it's a, it, it was a continuation of, of being a typical Irish Catholic going to Notre you know, Dame down in Hingham? Well, now it's in Hingham, but back oh. then when she graduated, it was in Dorchester. Oh, it was? Oh, no. I didn't know that. Um, you, um, you've been school committee person for two years, yep. and you mentioned the different schools. Why don't you tell people which schools you know, you're affiliated with with regard to Ward 7? Sure. So in Ward 7, we have the Angelo School, which is the Gators, uh, which is the Raymond School, the Raptors. Um, I not, uh, uh, the George School is the, the Jaguars. I'm not sure we have anything particular for, for North Middle School, but uh, we also have North Middle School, um, and then obviously we have the high school. Um, but uh, it, it's a great set of schools. All of our principals are engaged. They're active. They're, they're, our teachers, our staff are just absolutely wonderful people. My son goes to the George School, and he absolutely loves he? it. He's actually in third grade. Mm -hmm. um, he, um, he Where did the time go? It, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, he's already nine years old, and it seems like just yesterday he was just a baby. And my 17-year-old, God, as, as you know, you know, she's already looking at UMass Amherst and doing the college thing, and we're doing the tours. So, um, it's good luck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We uh, went through the same thing last year with my son Matt, and um, I would say this that um, he, I would say he's, from a parent's perspective, I think he's very well prepared to move on to college in terms of you know, um, st good study habits. Yeah. Um, I think he would agree with that. Um, you know, so far, knock on wood, he's doing very well in college, which um, you know makes us feel good, and obviously he feels good about himself. Um, but um, I think the uh, you know, I think education, you know, is what you make of it. Yeah. And you know, as you and I both know, here in Brockton, there's plenty of 
opportunities and options for students. It's, it's really not a one-size-fits-all. Yeah, I mean, we have multitudes of pathways for our students. So if one doesn't want to seek a four-year degree in, in whatever study, they have uh, options to go to Southeastern Regional. They have options to go to private education. They have different pathways. Um, to, to go to, to community college, et cetera. So it, there's a huge amount of opportunities in the city. And, you know, one of the, one of the things I always tell my daughter is, is that we can, the advantage of Brockton High is that um, it's given her so many options and so many opportunities that she's been able to flourish where she needs to, to flourish. And I think there's, a, there's something to be said for a big campus like Brockton High because it prepares her for a large campus setting in, in a college setting. I, mean, I think UMass has something like 7,000 undergrads and maybe four or 5,000 uh, graduate students. So there's a lot of kids. Yeah. And with, you know, most of these colleges have, say, four or 5,000 unless you go to a small uh, college. So it prepares her well to be involved with a lot of kids at one time. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that if you graduate from the Brockton Public Schools, you can, you can make it anywhere, really. Yeah. You know? Um, um, I left Brockton High and went to BU, a large place, but felt you know comfortable, felt fine. Um, and then law school was a smaller school up in Vermont, and I got that little taste of you know a school where you knew everyone's name. You yeah. Know? Uh, so it was like going from very large Brockton High to bigger BU, and then to that little place where everyone knows your name. You yeah. Know? Uh, but. Uh, you know, again, it's just an interesting pathway, but um, yeah, the, you know, the, and plus the options that the high school has in terms of activities. Yeah. You don't have to be a, you know, a, a, an incredible athlete to have fun at Brockton High. There's no, so many no, there, even in the band, there's multitudes of avenues one could take in the band. You can play an instrument, you can be a baton twirler, you can be um, on the cheerleading team as my, uh, my daughter is and the captain of the cheerleading team. So there's a multitude of options there. There's theater. Uh, there's a there's a TV studio. I mean, we we have a a planetarium in the school. Very few schools in the country, I think, have planetariums inside of it. Yeah, I mean, it's there's just so much to offer. It's you know, and uh, as you know, you know, the world is going green, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, focus on you know growing our own uh, vegetables and things, and uh, experiments with respect to the science classes up there. Uh, the greenhouse looks pretty good, and then. Outside the fine arts building, they have the um, you know garden vegetables yeah. that uh, are incorporated into the you know cafeterias. Yeah, and the science and technology part of it is is a growing and expanding uh, part of of the the educational system. Uh, the STEM initiatives are, are something that's that's really becoming the 21st century uh, thing, and I'd love to see that expand more into the high school. I'd love to see a, a separate wing if we ever had that kind of money um, expand specifically into that and collaborate with colleges and universities where they can come and in private industries like Novartis Pharmaceuticals, and they can collaborate with our students and, and give them real-world entrepreneurial experience. It's, they call them incubator schools um, and they have them in California and they work with private industries and they do lectures and, and give the, that real-world feeling mm -hmm. to um, entrepreneurship and, and, and being able to expand one's mind not just academically by reading books but by tinkering and playing with things and, and seeing what those outcomes are going to be. Yeah, I mean, the high school is, you know, it's it's a big place, but I think that there's room for growth, especially over by the Fine Arts Building. Um, um, you know, the committee, you know, yourself, and, you know, certainly the superintendent, um, I think has, you know, a long-term vision in terms of pursuing funds to uh, improve and uh, build on to the high school. We're certainly not going to... Um, uh, uh, do away with Brockton High. It's no. too valuable an asset. I mean, um, nor could the community afford to. Um, but I think that we need to think about a long-term solution to add on to the high school. Like you said, technology, STEM, um, the band is busting at the seams. Yeah. There needs to be more room uh, for um, the band to be able to practice and expand because there's so many kids that are interested because of the, you know, the success of the the music program here in Brockton, so that's a good problem to have. That we have a lot of kids that want to pursue that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that um, we want to do, 
Yeah. Unfortunately, um, a lot of them take funding, and you know, as we both know, this year was a tough year. With the budget, I mean, you put in a lot of time. We all put yeah. in a lot of time. Um, it's, it's, you know, we we can only do so much with the resources we have. Yeah, and I think we all take this this job seriously. I mean, I can personally know that I've been on the opposite side of the table, being, you know, somebody who's been laid off in the past in industry. Um, so I know what it's like. I know when we give those reduction in force notices. I know what it does. These people have families. They have job. You know, they have people that rely on them, and it's not an easy decision. And I don't think any of us entertain these things lightly. Um, yeah, we have. 53 teachers still, you know, not called back. Um, so we need to do whatever we can to continue to advocate on the state level for our funding so we can continue to bring these teachers back and continue to get more funding that we truly deserve, especially on the ELL population and the special needs population that take a lot of the budgetary dollars away from, from the general education population. And that's fine. I mean, they, they deserve um, that, um, but we deserve the proper funding from the state to do so. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, Brockton does more than its fair share um, for, you know, people that come to uh, the area. Um, they come to Brockton because, you know, we have such successful programs. I mean, um, but, you know, like you said, it takes a lot of funding. And in most instances, it takes more funds to uh, produce positive results in those couple of populations that you mentioned and um, and that's fine but the rest of the system needs to function as well yep. I mean and uh, you know for the you know the general ed kid um, I mean w what would benefit them well we've all know that it's the world filled with technology yeah so you know you know having you know enough computers having enough uh, you know, resources and enough, enough books and materials, um, having reasonable sized classes. I mean, those are the types of things that, you know, impact kids. And, and you know, th if the state is, gonna, um, is going to uh, foster Brockton as a type of community that, that is available for um, these types of populations, then again they need to like you said adequately fund so that we can function on par um, you know with other suburban districts um, you know one of the things that w you know we both went through um, a year ago was the charter school debate yep. and um, I mean I am not per se against charter schools in the right um, set of circumstances in the right community if, if, if Brockton was a community a school system that uh, didn't have options, uh, wasn't wasn't beneficial for kids, wasn't getting it done for our student population. Uh, parents, you know, throwing their arms up in frustration because uh, the kids can't get a good education. Then parents and kids deserve, you know, with taxpayer dollars, efficient um, and beneficial uh, education because your kids are only going to be in the first, second, third, twelfth, eleventh, seventh grade once. I mean, yeah. you know, they need to get that. But you know, what you know, what rubs me the wrong way is, and uh, you know, you, I want you to comment on this, and is that you know, these special needs populations are not the pool of children that are going to be taken for the charter schools that you know they're going to leave Brockton in the in its wake with all of these high end high needs students um, they are not going to take the same percentage of kids they're not going to take 33 percent of ELL students they're not going to take 13 percent special needs students they're going to take you know kids that you know are basically you know, without those types of issues, and yeah. and and what are we going to be? You know, how are we going to be able to manage? And they're actually going to take children like my my daughter, who's in the top two and a half percent of her class, and she'll do good wherever she goes. That's you know not so much an issue. And I'm not in, opposed to charters on the face of it because there are various types of charters. There is the Horace Mann type of charter, which is still locally controlled. It's still uh, controlled with the school board as well as you know the teachers unions. Uh, and I find those to be very effective.
perspective. Um, there are commonwealth charters of which this was the one that we fought against and they have no local control. They cherry pick the system, they rig it, uh, where they take all the, the best kids and then they say, wow, look at our test scores, they're so great. Well, yeah, that's because you took the best kids. Yeah, yeah, you're not comparing apples to apples. Yeah, and then they will take the ELLs. I mean, you want they us to take compare those. our top students? I guarantee our top students in the Brockton Public Schools will outperform theirs. As, as we've shown, we've shown our top students outperform kids in, in various districts. Yeah. We have, uh, at, at the North Middle School, we had a, a program, a financial program, uh, that was run independently, and those kids competed against kids from districts in Newton and, and Wellesley, right. and they actually beat them consistently. Um, so we do educate them and we yeah. do educate them well. Yeah, the, the charter schools will continue to fight the charter schools because I believe we offer those choices and we offer those choices in a multitude of pathways and we, Brockton is unique. We are a diverse city. Um, they don't take the high uh, needs population. They don't take the ELLs and the percentages they do. They'll say they do and they'll take some originally and then they'll kick them to the curb after October 1st when our funding mechanism comes into place. So they'll get the money for those kids and then we won't see the funding back for another year and a half uh, for those kids which puts us in a dangerous situation. And you know what I would say to people is can we continue to bleed the system right. and not have to make well, very I, deep, yeah, deep I mean, cuts. Yeah, that's the problem. You know the, the system has been um, dealing with you know financial uh, hardships for the last you know few years, and you know how much more can the system take before you know you really see uh, negative results? Um, and then at the same time, you know people will at the state level point the finger, you know when really they should be pointing the finger at themselves. Um, um, they, you know, the way charter schools are funded. There isn't a proportional reduction in resources that um, that you can basically, you know, close a single building down and um, eliminate the expenses that the district uh, incurs. I mean, it's 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 a pull from the entire system, spread out through the entire system, so that you don't get that proportional reduction, you know, in expenses. Yeah. Um, so, so we still end up with the same or similar amount of expenses, yet we're not being funded for those expenses that are still in place. Um, so that's another problem I, I, I think that you know the state needs to address if they want to if they want to foster and continue to have charter schools coming into a place like our community, then fine. But then fund it separately adequately fund what we have um, and you know the two entities can coexist um, but you know it's funny I, I'm curious as to how many top students would go to a charter school because they certainly aren't going to have the facilities that we have they're cer certainly not going to have the music opportunities or the fine arts opportunities you know like you mentioned the TV station the planetarium the programs over at the Fine Arts Building, um, the um, the drama, the musicals, you know, certainly they're not going to have athletics like we have in Brockton. No. Um, so so you know, I don't I don't know really, you know, if it's if it does open up shop, um, how many uh, kids that are involved like involved kids, kids that are vested in the system, that are participating in these different programs would actually leave. I mean, I would never say to my two kids, yeah, I think you should go to the charter school and leave the, the, the Brockton public schools, leave Brockton High, because I just see how beneficial it's been for both of them. I mean, you know, Matt did very well and now Greg is doing very well and he's, you know, engaged as your daughter's engaged. Yeah. But, but if they went to, you know, a small charter school, they're not going to have near the, you know, anywhere near what we currently have. I mean, she's not going to be performing on the level that she performs, no. you know, in, in, you know, certainly the halftime show or does, is she involved in other productions and things during um, the year? Or? Currently she just is in the captain of the cheerleading team, but because I have, uh, her, she's in the top two and a half percent of her class, as you know, you know, when you have high achieving kids, mm -hmm. they, they're so focused on the academics. Yeah. Um, they're, they're just 
we're very very focused and and it's it's a lot of work i don't yeah. you know when my daughter gets a b in something it's it's the end of the world you know and we try to explain you know you you've done your best and and that's all you can do but yeah. uh for for kids that are um talented and gifted students it's it's a challenge um they bring a separate challenge to the table because they are so driven i mean she's already uh, aligned herself with becoming a doctor but not only becoming a doctor but becoming a pediatric neurologist most kids don't focus that laser light yeah, that definitively. definitively and already <laughs> a thing um, and she does work with the boxer buddy program um, and she's worked in the special needs department so um, which she absolutely loves so you know she certainly has a gift for that and it's another opportunity that we give our students yeah. to engage with not only the the general education population but there's the boxer buddy program there's this you know and everybody graduates at Brockton High at the same time mm. you know we we have all of our schools at the same time we do an amazing job getting them out the door that day in two and a half or or, or three hours or less which is amazing uh, two you know thousand kids in in that time frame is just yeah. utterly amazing I don't know how they do it well we're coming up on a we have a few minutes left um, uh, how um how has campaigning been out there? How have you found that? Campaigning is is interesting. I mean, it's a lot lot of work. Um, you know, but I enjoy every minute of it. I'm knocking on doors. I'm talking to residents. I'm meeting with people. I'm talking. You know, explaining my situation and and why I think I should be reelected. And and you know, continuing to meet with parents. And and I think it's. You know, it's it's a lot of work. I think anybody who does campaigning, I think the ones that really put up with the most are the spouses, uh, because they have to, you know, deal with us more out of the house than than normal. Um, but this seems to be a season where there, I find there are more signs than ever out there <laughs> this year. I don't know, but uh, and bigger ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm I, I can't say I'm not part of the problem too. I have a couple four foot eight foot signs myself, but um, I think it's important that that. You know, we educate the population on, on the on the different candidates and what they represent. I mean, I always say, you know, look at look at the 22 months that that I've been in in the in the job, and you can look at you know the the other person running for for the position and and look at our differences. Look what our passions are. Look and see if we do have a passion for it, or we're using it as a stepping stone for something else. Um, I don't think that our kids should be a, a second place job. I don't think we should use this as a stepping stone. We don't do this for the money. We don't do this for fame. We don't do this for glory. Uh, we do this because we believe in, in what you know, we're doing and, and why we're doing it. And I think that's important, especially on the school committee, to look at. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like you said, it, it's, it's certainly not uh, something that you should, I think, take lightly. I think someone that's interested in school committee needs to realize how much is involved in it and how much time is necessary in order to be effective. Um, you know, one thing that I, I'm amazed some people when they call me on an issue, oh, you call me back. Yeah, of course they called you back, you know. But it's funny, in sometimes, somehow in public life, um, people are uh, surprised by that. Like well, no, I call people back. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's our job. Uh, yeah, is is we are advocates for their mm. kids, and we do what we can to advocate for our children, and that's the most important part of our job. Except for the budget and hiring the superintendent, mm. we deal with the day-to-day -day issues that that we can mm. assist with. Well, we're wrapping up. Is there a uh, is there a message you want to ask the voters, you know, to do on November third? Sure. Well, I would ask them to please consider my uh, myself for a vote on Tuesday, November third. Um, you know, my name is Ray Henningsen. I'm running for re-election. I believe that you know uh, I've done an excellent job these past 22 months, and I'm going to continue to pour my heart into this job. Um, I believe in what I do and I don't just shine a seat and and I act I've helped run school supply drives I've helped run fan drives for the elderly um, so I believe that public service starts with service and I think that um, I think we need leaders like that and with two decades of experience in the budgets as well I bring a unique set of qualifications to the system and I would ask that you know I get your vote on Tuesday November 3rd thanks for coming in thank you Tom. great job